हेलो गुड डे डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एंड डिस्कस अ डिजीज व्हिच इज अ जूनोटिक डिजीज एज यू कैन सी इन द टाइटल ऑफ द पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन you can see a rabbit dog biting to a man so a disease which is transmitted by the bites of animals that is called zoonotic disease that is a disease which is transmitted through animals we call that as a zoonotic disease zoo basically you must be knowing zoo is a word which stands for animal so we are going to discuss a disease related to the one which is transmitted by animals and is that is rabies okay so let us learn about this disease in detail rabies this particular disease has been recognized in india since long back since the vedic period that is more than 2500 to 4000 years before in 1500 to 500 bc before christ this disease was described and can be seen in indian scriptures it has also been mentioned in atharva veda and it is an endemic disease in india where a vast country with a very large population you will always find few cases reported from some points that is what we call it as a endemic in contrast to pandemic where the disease is widespread over a large area large part of the world endemic disease is the one which occurs at a regular interval in various parts that is known as endemic disease the diagram which is showing here the map which is showing here the disease you can see is very much prevalent in india where there are more than 10000 deaths on an average per year while it is also prevalent in certain other countries southeast countries as well as in china pakistan and iran this disease is also widely spread in africa as well as asia and all over the world more than 55000 people die of rabies every year out of which about 95% of the human death occur in asia and africa most of the human death they follow a bite from infected dog about 30 to 60% of the victims of the dog bites they are below the children of the age 15 now this is a zoonotic disease which is caused by a virus a rhabdovirus rabies basically infects domestic as well as wild animals and is spread it to the people through very close contact with infected saliva of the diseased animal it can also be transmitted when your scratches or the bites are infected with the saliva of an infected animal this disease is nearly present in each and every continent but the most common deaths occur in asia and africa 
once the symptoms of this disease begins to appear the disease is fatal that is leads to the death of a human being now what are some of the very common facts the first one is the mad dog or a rabid dog i would say it bites humans which leads to rabies in latin the word basically rabies is derived from a latin word in which rabhas means frenzy the individual as well as the animal fears of water hydrophobia hydro means water phobia means afraid of water so there is a fear of water and the saliva of dobby dog contains these viruses it was if you remember the louis pasteur who developed the vaccination against rabies by using the dry powder of the bones obtained from dead animals it is basically the vaccination which was one of the earliest vaccine developed after the jenner's vaccination of smallpox here it is a vaccination due to the fixed virus from rabbit which is injected into the human persons infected persons one of the first person who was injected or given a vaccination was joseph nister and he was injected with 13 injections of the cord vaccine now as i told you it is a zoonotic disease caused by a virus belonging to rabdo virus family and the genus is lassa virus it is basically as we will see the structure in the following slide an enveloped bullet shaped virus the disease is a slow progressive zoonotic disease and the primary reservoirs of these disease are wild mammals it can be spread by both wild as well as domestic mammals by bites scratches and inhalation of droplets so this is basically a diagram which shows a dog which is diagrammatically showing how does this disease progress it is because of the bite of one another mammal maybe a dog or fox or even a cat when it bites to a another mammal when they fight with another then they bite each other then this virus spreads through nervous system that is it replicates in the muscles and through that through the nervous system it reaches the central nervous system that is the spinal cord from where it may it travels to the brain and here the infection spreads from here then the virus also spreads to the entire body and through saliva this virus may come out so this is as i told you the bullet shaped virus it is a enveloped virus and it contains a genome which is a single strand rna virus it belongs to our lassa genus lassa means rage rage means fever fear so the size of this virus is around 180 to 75 nanometer and the outer layer this green colored one is a lipoprotein which is containing spikes which are made up from glycoprotein s the rna which is present inside this is basically a genome which is 
unsegmented means it is a continuous RNA strand and the linear negative sense RNA negative sense RNA is the one which would take into multiplication now there are two words which are very important you should understand first is the fixed virus and the second one is street virus now what is a fixed virus fixed virus is the one whose virulence and the incubation period they have been stabilized by the serial passage from one animal to the another animal or from one culture to the another culture that I am talking about the tissue culture it is a virus so the virulence as well as the incubation period have been stabilized stabilized means it has been attenuated through the serial transfer from one culture or from one tissue culture to another from one animal to the another and it remains fixed during further transmission now this rabies virus which has undergone a serial passage through rabbits is thus stabilized in its virulence power and in its incubation and is known as fixed virus this is in contrast to the street virus which is from a naturally infected animal this is in total opposite to the viruses which are grown in laboratory from one animal to the next animal these are basically street viruses are from a naturally infected animals in a population and the stream does not get fixed that is it does not achieve attenuation this is a virulent strain and this virulent rabies virus when it bites the another animal in its natural environment the bitten animal will contract a disease from the infected one either through bite or through the sketch scratch and this is known as a street virus so street viruses are virulent strains while the fixed viruses are a virulent strain and the vaccine is normally made from fixed viruses of different or many mammals one can say that any mammal can get rabies that is any mammal can get this disease examples are raccoons shanks foxes and even bats dogs cats cattle and ferrets are also among the animals and in case of other individuals human being is the one who can be infected <clears throat> mammals are normally warm blooded animals which have hair and mammary gland to produce milk for their babies animals like frogs birds and snakes they do not get rabies because they are not included in a mammal now this is a caution which is shown by a one line man's best friend that is here it is a diagram or a photograph of a girl who is playing with a dog so dogs basically to convey the meaning dogs are basically man's best friend but they can spread the rabies if these animals are not vaccinated so remember the domestic pets they have to be vaccinated against the rabies disease these viruses they are sensitive to certain common chemicals 
For example, it is sensitive to ethanol, iodine, soap and detergents. Why this particular word has been highlighted? Because whenever a human being, a person is bitten by an animal, the first thing that anyone has to do is to clean that wound with soap and detergent very very thoroughly so that the viral load is reduced as much as possible. Because viruses are sensitive to soap and detergents, the spread can be minimized. The load can be minimized. Apart from this, the virus is also destroyed by chemicals like ether, chloroform and acetone. Remember, this virus can be destroyed when heated at 50 degrees centigrade for about one hour or at 60 degrees centigrade in five minutes. Why this is important? Because these properties can be used for control against this disease. Now coming to the antigenic property of this virus, these viruses have surface spikes, that is these are called spikes, a hair-like projections or I would say needle-like projections. These spike proteins, they are very much similar you can say to the spike proteins of COVID virus. So these surface spikes, they are composed of glycoprotein G and it produces a pathogenicity by binding to acetylcholine receptors in neural tissues. That is, it binds to the neuro, neural tissues, that is to the nerve cells. And it stimulates T lymphocyte cytotoxic effects. Now, how the transmission of this disease takes place? This disease can be transmitted by abrasions or scratches on the skin, which may be infected by saliva of an animal. Probably, even a domestic animals, when it plays with you or when it loves makes love to you, it would, uh, I would say, leak the skins. It's a very common property of any domestic animals that it would leak your body parts. So during this leaking, the scratches or abrasions on the skin, that is the open skin, wounds, etc. Through this, the virus may enter. The mucous membranes which are exposed to saliva can be a dangerous and most frequently via deep penetrating bite wounds. When superficial leakage of the wounds or abrasions are done by infected animals, the virus can be transmitted but the more possibility is when the wounds are due to biting of an animal at that time when the biting is basically a deep penetration of the soft skin tissues. Then this infected saliva can reach very rapidly to the nerve cells where it gets virus get attached to the acetylcholine receptors on nerve cells. Apart from this, the other routes include inhalation, that is, or inhalation of infected droplets. So, inhalation in bat, which is there, bats normally hanging in caves. So, through their droppings or through their infected air or ingestion of dead or infected animal meat or even corneal transplantation 
has been found to be able to transmit this virus disease now how does it spread this is the diagram which explains you the spread of rabies virus whenever the animal bites the farther away from the brain the longer virus takes to the takes for the spread for example this is the main site that is the brain if the animal bites to the leg of an individual the distance from leg to the brain is very far as compared to the bite from the hands or from your trunk so this distance when the biting is here in the arm or here or even in the leg here below the belt then depending upon the distance from the brain the speed of infection will slow down so virus spreads through central nervous system that is this okay common carriers are bats fox cats and shanks the symptoms as we will see but just to tell you in brief includes fever depression agitation painful spasms followed by excessive salivation and the death occurs normally if not treated within a week without vaccine now coming to the pathogenesis of a rabies then first thing is bite by a rabid dog or other animals would transmit or the virus would transmit through the bite of these rabid dog or animals which carries this virus is in saliva they are deposited on the wound site if untreated 50% will develop rabies rabies can be produced not only by bites but can be produced by leaks and even by corneal transplantation as mentioned earlier the virus multiplies in the muscles in the connective tissue and nerves after about 48 to 72 hours and finally it penetrates the nerve endings so live viruses from epidermis mucous membranes it is coming to peripheral now which is passing on centripetally to central nervous system that is the gray matter and finally leading to brain from that centrifugally it will be distributed to other body tissues including salivary glands so here the brain is inflamed as it is shown here this is the typical photograph which was taken due to the bite of a rabid dog you can see various teeth penetrating into the forearm of an individual now if you see here the virus enters animal via rabid bite for example animal that is the dog bites here then the virus replicates in the muscles at the site of bite here rivers will indicate in the third step virus infects the now endings in the peripheral nervous system means these are the peripheral nervous systems here and moves by retrograde transport fourth step is the virus replicates in the dorsal root ganglion and travels up the spinal cord to the brain like this 
when the brain is then infected and then once the brain is infected virus travels from brain via nerves to other tissues such as eyes kidneys and salivary glands here so this is how the virus will be transmitted in our body it will travel in the body from brain virus spreads to salivary glands conjunctival cells released into tears that is to the eyes also in the kidneys in the lactating glands that is through milk after pregnancy or include in the pregnant woman rabies virus may infect the central nervous system as here this is a brain and this is a spinal cord virus travels through exoplasm towards the spinal cord at the rate of 3 mm per hour the spread from brain centrifugally to various parts of the body it means it disseminates from brain to different parts of the body it multiplies in salivary glands and it is shed in saliva corneal that is the eyes facial tissues such as skin and other things they are also infected incubation is normally ranging from 1 to 3 months but on an average it takes between 7 to 3 years also earliest it will be 7 days or in some cases it may take a very long time that is up to 3 years there are three stages of the disease first one is prodrome stage second one is acute encephalitis third stage is coma and death now depending upon the symptoms observed in animals this can be categorized as furious rabies that is when the animal shows various furious expressions or is wild enough and is furious enough it is in a rage the second one is dumb that is tranquilly range rage tranquilly and the third one is legendary gullian bear syndrome category 1 according to world health organization in category 1 touching or feeding suspect animals but the skin is intact in category 2 minor scratches without bleeding from contact or leaks on broken skin and category 3 due to one or more bites or scratches leaks on broken skin or other contact that breaks the skin or exposes the bites now what are the cleaning clinical findings that is what are the different types what all different types of symptoms can be observed in an individual first one is bizarre behavior bizarre means unusual behavior like a mad person all of us then the same person a normal person would behave very differently bizarre behavior then the person remains agitated means he is disturbed throughout there are seizures difficulty in drinking the person faces difficulty in drinking that is the due to spasms and the muscles in the jaws they contract as a result it is very difficult or a painful for a person to swallow even water and therefore he avoids water that is why it is also known as hydrophobia the animal would run away from seeing the water so patients are also unable to take water or any solids they are afraid of water as i have told you even the sight or the sound of water 
disturbs the patient as well as a result the patient suffers with intense thirst the spasms of pharynx produces choking and the death follows within 1 to 6 days there is a respiratory arrest and that will ensue later on in some cases persons may survive headache fever or sore throat is observed nervousness and confusion arises pain or tingling at the site of bite then wherever the animal has bitten either here or on a leg or on the trunk wherever there is a tingling pain at the site of the biting hallucinations that is imagining or seeing things that are not really there which does not really exist that is hallucinations hydrophobia that is a fear of water due to spasms in the throat and paralysis it is due to means why paralysis would ensue because it is basically a nervous system which is affected and therefore unable to move the parts of the body would lead to coma or death the clinical manifestations the first one is non specific prodrome then second followed by acute neurological encephalitis that is profound dysfunctions of the brain stem third stage will be coma and the fourth one is will be the death in rare cases the person may recover from it now in non specific prodrome it may last from 1 to 2 days to 1 week this includes fever headache sore throat anorexia nausea vomiting agitation depression and parenthesis or <clears throat> fasciculations at and around the site of inoculation of the virus that is at the site of biting this is how the it is a photograph of a person who is in a grave rabies conditions even the hands are tied with belts and other things majority of them will succumb to the disease now clinical presentation or what are the clues in diagnosis that may lead to the help in diagnosis in most cases human rabies is diagnosed primarily on the basis of clinical symptoms as well as the shine which are expressed or shown by the individuals as well as the corroborative history of or the evidence of animal bite even the dog or the animal who has bitten the person if possible the animal is captured and is kept for observation and it is observed that whether the animal dies or not so death of an animal is also an evidence then incomplete or no vaccination following exposures the facility for laboratory diagnosis and confirmation of rabies is there be it humans or animals is available pre mortem in only few institutes in india where it is diagnosed <clears throat> now how laboratory diagnosis is done first is clinical differentiation from other cases of encephalitis second is post mortem diagnosis by demonstration of nigri bodies this is a very important one nigri bodies can be identified and it can be stained differentially by using a negative staining procedures and the presence of nigri body confirms the diagnosis of rabies then next it follows isolation of virus from mice brain by inoculating into mice brain it can be tissue cultured on even cell lines for example w138 and bhk cell lines one of the possible emerging method is pcr based method and if 
if methods if methods that is if methods for corneal impression method okay so the common confirmatory test of rabies includes standard pre mortem test and this is a fluorescent antibody test which demonstrates the presence of the viral antigen the standard post mortem test is the biopsy of the patient's brain and examination for negri bodies laboratory findings can be done after even cbc that is complete blood checking and csf cerebrospinal fluid testing so as to exclude other etiological diseases then pathological findings includes the formation of cytoplasmic inclusion now what is that cytoplasmic inclusion negri bodies antigens can be detected by specific immunofluorescent techniques anti mortem <coughs> conjunctival and skin biopsy from nape of the neck post mortem impressions from the surfaces of the salivary glands hippocampus and histological examinations are also being done elisa test exists for the specific antibody detection as well as as i have told you there is a pcr method this is a cell which is showing the presence of these negri bodies so inclusion body negri bodies are basically inclusion bodies and they are 100% diagnostic test for rabies infection but it is only observed in 20% of the infected cases this is a photograph of a negri body in brain tissues this is the one here so negri bodies around negri bodies or round or oval inclusion bodies that can be seen in cytoplasm and in sometimes in the process of processes of neuron of rabid animals after death negri bodies are eosinophilic sharply outlined patho go monic inclusion bodies 2 to 10 micrometers in diameter found in cytoplasm of certain nerve cells pcr is one of the emerging method for diagnosis differential diagnosis includes the differentiation from other viral encephalitis hysteria reaction to animal bites gullian bad syndromes differentiating from poliomyelitis or allergic encephalomyelitis how this disease can be prevented it can be prevented by pre exposure prophylaxis and pro exposure prophylaxis one of the first vaccine to be developed for rabies was prepared by pasteur by drying various periods pieces of spinal cord of rabies infected with the fixed virus in 1885 joseph mister whose photograph is shown here he was a 9 year boy vaccinated by 13 injections which were given around the this in the trunk where it directly very much near to the spinal cord and the patient was saved now the pre exposure vaccination is indicated in laboratory workers veterinarians and technical staff who is or who may have the chances of exposure to such animals for example persons working with the forest departments forest departments roaming in the forest departments the veterinarian staff the technical staff of the veterinary hospital as well as bat handlers they are the one 
who are the persons who should be given vaccination right from the beginning that is pre exposure before the exposure of the virus to the person that is pre exposure vaccination so such persons are given the vaccinations in the beginning pre exposure before exposure then supporting care in animal dogs now the basic care in animal bites is before exposure to infections pet or domestic animals have to be again given the same kind of vaccination in veterinary surgeons or animal handlers specific prophylaxis after the exposure to dog bite and after local treatment cauterization scrub with soap and clean water use sterilization tincture of iodine anti rabic serum and do not suture the wound that is do not close the wound unless highly essential if you are bitten or scratched then tell and health care workers immediately wash the wound with soap and water inform the doctor right away for example this is the one which is shown here scratches on the hands post exposure prophylaxis means once the animal bites then prophylactic measures which have to be taken immediately after biting the animals first includes wound cleaning and treatment wash the area of the animal bite thoroughly thoroughly means very thoroughly using soap and water because the viruses are very sensitive to detergents they are sensitive to iodine they are sensitive to other substances like alcohol and ether so wash them very thoroughly so the load that is the number of viruses can be reduced they can be removed initial treatment for an animal bite should include thorough cleansing however all animal bites should be seen by a physician do not avoid to go to physician thinking that we have thoroughly cleaned the wound wound and it will be sufficient or it will suffice enough but you should do that first followed by a visit paid to a physician apply pressure if the bite is actively bleeding so as to avoid the blood flow post exposure vaccination basically anti rabies vaccines are given when a person is bitten scratched or licked by rabid animal and the animal is kept under observation for at least 10 days <clears throat> now the as i have told you different categories as recommended by world health organization includes category 1 which is during touching or feeding suspect animals but the skin is intact category 2 includes minor scratches without bleeding from contact or leaks on a broken skin and the category 3 is the one or more bites or scratches leaks on the broken skin or other contact that breaks the skin or exposure to bats vaccines are available in the market and they are very easily available this vaccines contains 5% suspension of infected sheep brain that is sheep brain which is infected with fixed virus it is inactivated with phenol at 37 degree centigrade and vaccines are available after inactivation with beta propiolactone which is commonly used in india vaccine contains nucleic acid capsid antigens and small quantities of glycoprotein g which is used in developed countries with neural complications under neural complications now those sample vaccines includes class 1 is 2 ml for 7 days 
5 ml for 14 days and 10 ml for 14 days class 3 this is the different classes as we have described earlier and in bpl vaccines it is 2 ml 7 days 5 ml 10 days and 5 ml 10 days neural vaccines includes class 1 is at a slight risk class 2 is at moderate risk and class 3 at a great risk neural vaccines may cause neuro paralytic complications and <clears throat> laundry's type ascending paralysis the dose is regulated according to the grade or a class of bites and in many countries it do not use in view of neurological complications then there is a vaccine which is human rabies cell culture vaccines these are basically human deployed cell vaccines hdcv they are developed by Koprovsky, Victor and Plotkin. Here the purified chick embryo cell vaccines, that is a sector one, is PCEC. We also have purified Vero cells vaccines, purified duck embryo vaccines. So these are various types of vaccines which have been developed. One in human deployed vaccines, deployed cell vaccines, other one is in purified Vero cell vaccines and the third one is purified duck embryo vaccines. Now, the post exposure prophylaxis vaccine is given for 6 to 7 days and the dose is given on 0 day, that is the day of biting followed by 3rd 7th, 14th, 30th and 90th day. Immunity would last for 5 years and in this is given, this vaccine is given or injected on deltoid region, this is the one and it is not to be given in gluteal region. This is the photograph which shows the active immunization as it has been marked 0 day, 3 day, 7 day, 14 days and 28th day. At present, the cell culture vaccines which are commonly prescribed include human deployed cell vaccines, purified chick embryo cell vaccines and purified viral cell vaccines. Okay. What we discussed just now was vaccination and that was an active immunization that is pre or post exposure. Now coming to passive immunization. Passive immunization as we had discussed in detail in the past lectures is basically the immunization by injecting a preformed antibodies which have been manufactured or which has been prepared in some other animals those antibodies they are purified and that antibodies they are directly being injected in the infected individuals so passive immunization is a one of them is a human rabies immunoglobulin hrig this is given to high risk bitten on face and neck when an animal bites the neck region or the head region or the face because as it has been described earlier the transmission of the disease is dependent upon the days of transmission or the time for transmission depends upon the position of the biting if it is bitten in the legs or in the arms then it takes virus will travel from this nervous system to the central nervous system at the back and then from there it travels to the brain but if the bite of an animal infected animal is on the neck or on the face then you don't have much time left out for body to prepare the antibodies so vaccination is not the preferred mode of prophylactic measure. In that case, 
passive immunization is the one which is preferred. So, it is given to high risk individuals who are beaten on face and neck. And the dose which is given is around 20 IU international units per kg weight. Half at the site of bite means where there is the virus has beaten and the rest is given through intramuscular route. Active immunization should be initiated with passive immunization. So, active immunization alone would not be enough, but a passive immunization should also be done along with the active immunization. Now, what is the future of rabies vaccine? Number of experimental vaccines are at present developmental stages, which may provide alternative, safe and potent, but less expensive options. This includes specifically DNA vaccines, recombinant viral vaccines and recombinant protein vaccines. Further testing is needed to determine if and which one of these novel vaccines will make their way into mass production and application in the future. There is also a possibility of subunit or genetically engineered vaccines for rabies. Here, a viral immunizing agent that has been treated to remove the traces of viral nucleic acid so that only the protein subunit of the virus remains. That is, the genome has been removed and the genome is RNA gene. So, the only protein portion remains and that is what the antigenicity is. So, these subunits have less risk of causing adverse reactions. Several trials are underway. Now, the epidemiology. No danger of nursing rabies patients would, but they have to take precautions. There is not much danger of a nursing staff. But they should always take precautions. Any animal bite can cause rabies, except mice. Bats in caves. Be, remember, bats are the flying mammals. They are not birds. They are mammals. So they are prone. All mammals are prone to rabies infections. So bats in cave, they spread the disease by respiratory route. In India, approximately 30,000 people die with rabies every year. The rate is slowly and slowly dropping down due to the vaccination as well as the urbanization programs. In spite of health education, several individuals, they die due to rabbit rabid infection in the developing world. This is the typical diagram where a person is being attacked by dogs. This is a rabid dog, furious dog which is shown here. On every year on September 28th, World Rabies Day is celebrated and it is a day where a cooperative global events are planned to reduce the suffering from rabies. This day celebrates Dr. Louis Pasteur's vision of a rabies-free world. So, at the end, the word of caution is never touch an unfamiliar or wild animal. Always ask permission to touch someone else's pet. So thank you very much. This PowerPoint presentation was brought with the help of Dr. T. V. Rao who prepared this slides. Thank you very much.